Eric Darling here with Darling Data and uh, in today's video we're going to talk about how you can use my free open source uh, bug free store procedure SP underscore human events uh, so that to, to profile uh, store procedures now uh, I use this all the time when I'm working with clients and uh, the, the main way that I use it is to set up uh, an extended event that captures as much performance information as I can about something running uh, from a single like window in SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, so uh, this is very useful when if you have store procedures that um, you know either do a lot of tiny little things or are just very long. And you're not really where to start. You're not really sure where to start your performance tuning because you're not really sure what the worst of the worst of the worst is. Now you can get some idea about this stuff from Query Store. Now you could also use my other store procedure, SP underscore Quickie Store, to search for a specific store procedure in a database. And you could look at the top 10 queries uh, ordered by average CPU and probably do a pretty good job of figuring out where to start in there. But you know, with Query Store uh, and, you know, with the un unfortunateness that is the plan cache, um, the thing that you may often run into is that you, you will see one of these, you know, cached plans, which is the equivalent uh, of an estimated plan, right? There's no r actual execution runtime statistics stored in them. And it might be a little hard to figure out exactly which part of a big query plan is slow, or it might be tough to figure out exactly, like, which part you might want to start focusing on. And this, is, this, this will help you do that. So uh, over in this window, I have a few different examples of how you can set up SP underscore human events to, uh, to do that. So the top one is the one that we're going to be using today because we're just going to be watching a specific uh, session ID. That's this window over here. Uh, we're going to use the query event type because this one will get all the query level performance information that we could possibly care about. Uh, we're going to only get queries that run for 500 milliseconds or longer. And uh, this is the session ID that we're going to focus on, 107. That should be the one that we're using in this window, but I'll double check that before we kick things off. And we want to use this keep alive thing because uh, what the keep alive thing does is it sets up uh, an extended event that SP human events won't automatically tear down. So like one other way of running SP human events is to give it a number of seconds you want it to run for. And what it'll do is it'll start an extended event session, like grab whatever uh, event type information you decide you want to capture in here. And then at the end of that, that sampled seconds period, it will uh, like parse out all the information from the event and then kill off the session so that it doesn't keep running and running. Why the keep alive thing is useful is because you can uh, just right click on it, say watch live data, and then like run your store procedure and watch data as it comes in. So uh, there are a couple other examples down here. Uh, and these two just show you how to collect stuff from one specific store procedure, right? So these are a little bit different because they don't use session ID. We're just using object name and we're gonna say, we just wanna get stuff from this store procedure. And uh, if you're feeling a little scared of, uh, you know, let's just say that you, you're casting a wide net uh, with what you want to collect, uh, one thing that you can you can not you can you can skip over is collecting actual execution plans by using the skip plans parameter. So this will get you all sorts of other information, uh, you know, parameter value, statement level, CPU duration, all the other stuff, just without the actual execution plans. Uh, so like maybe this might just be good enough for you to like grab an example query execution of something that ran for a long time, rerun it in SSMS and get query plans from it that way. Or use the other, use, the, use SP human events to focus in on a single session, just like recreating that stuff. So I do try to make it easy to, to use all these things. Uh, you know, there is, a, there is a help parameter that lets you figure out exactly uh, which parameters and which val which parameters are available and what valid arguments for them are. Uh, so let's just double check this. We are indeed using session ID 107 here. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to execute this block. And I don't know why there's so much white space over there. That's quite strange looking. And then we're gonna go into management and extended events. And we should probably refresh this. And now we have this keeper underscore human events query. Right, so it's prefixed with keeper because it's going to stay alive. Uh, and of course, human events because it's SP human events. And then we have underscore query 
because we're cap capturing query events. Now you probably don't want to have multiples of these running on the same server because you know uh, stuff might get a little wonky. Uh, but then what we're going to do is just right click on this and select watch live data. Right, so we'll do that. Now we have this wonderful video window here where uh, nothing is happening yet. But if we come over to this window and we execute our store procedure, we don't, we don't have to have query plans turned on here. We're just going to run this. And uh, as this thing executes, we're going to watch this window. Because eventually, something will show up in here. Uh, like this is still running, so we don't have any, nothing has come in yet. So some query is running for a good long time. And laptop starting to make some noise. And now we have a couple rows in here. And now we have a couple more rows in here. Now, if you're feeling real scared of like, you know, um, maybe SQL Server, tr like over collecting your, your right word observer overhead, you can stop the extended event from collecting data once, um, once it's finished. But here we have a timestamp, which is oh, oh so very useful. And then we have uh, the, some of the events that fired in here. So uh, here's a query plan for a slow thing. And you can see the full query plan here. And we can zoom in and you know, see, oh, oh, wow, this took a real long time. It took 12 seconds to insert into this table variable. Table variables, boo, hiss. And uh, you know, we had a, this thing took seven seconds to do a seek. And this thing took four seconds to do a scan. And oh, boy, the whole thing is just a mess. Now, if it were me doing my professional query tuning song and dance with this, I would, first thing that I would probably point out is that, you know, you, you're inserting into a table variable, and table variables have all sorts of downsides in SQL Server. Like, you're not allowed to uh, generate a parallel execution plan when you insert into a table variable, or when you modify a table var variable generally. Uh, and if you're on SQL Server 2022 or various Azure nonsenses, you'll get this warning. If you're on older versions of SQL Server, you'll just see non-parallel plan reason could not generate valid parallel plan. And then we would talk about how table variables don't get column level statistics histograms associated with them. And, you know, they're, they're a little bit of a black box to SQL Server. And like even in newer versions and with recompile hints, we can get like the table cardinality, like the number of rows that are actually in the table variable, you still don't have any like good hist like histogram statistic information about the, the values in the columns like you get with temp, with temp tables. So uh, we've got some information here. And one thing that you can do, uh, which, I, uh, which I usually end up doing, especially for the longer store procedures where there's a whole lot more stuff in them, is I'll usually start right clicking here and, and hitting show column and table so that I can see stuff like CPU time, and I can see stuff like granted memory, and I can see, uh, so, oh, you know what, this, the, the post execution plan one isn't my, doesn't have all my favorite stuff. But you can also grab the statement text, uh, you can grab the overall duration, like you can grab all sorts of like good information about what's going on in here. And uh, like I said before, uh, like if you even if you skip getting execution plans, there are a couple of the events that show that are used uh, as part of the event session uh, definition that will show you the parameter values that got passed into the store procedure. So this can all be very useful stuff to compare. Now, the what's what's frustrating is that the CPU and duration is in microseconds, and my brain does not compute or comprehend microseconds very well. Uh, so like, I just like, whenever I'm looking at this stuff, I always have to make mental notes, like, like go, like, look at the, look at the actual, like, look at the, at the actual execution plan. This was 12.135 seconds. And so I know that any numbers that are about this length are going to be like over 10 seconds, right? <laughs> like, like, like just the, that starts at the 12 and there's one, two, three, uh, four, uh, like seven, eight, 57 digits afterwards. And I, I, I know in my head that this is what, uh, you know, took the bulk of the execution time in here because the full statement took about 15 and a half seconds. So, uh, you know, well, this is where like the query tuning magic sort of kicks in. And let's, uh, let's kill this thing off. Let's say let's stop that and, you know, come back over here. Now, this is a lot more, again, this is a lot more valuable when you have store procedures that do a lot of different things, maybe even call sub store procedures. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of like tiny little statements in them. And the reason why this is so useful is because if, if you have store procedures that do like a bajillion things, 
right? Like a lot of like, you know, declaring variables, assigning variables, things, and you turn on actual execution plans in SSMS, you're gonna flood that thing and have a, just a bad old time scrolling through a, t a billion tiny little different execution plans, trying to figure out where in the batch the slow stuff happened. So, you know, uh, just to do a little query tuning song and dance stuff, let's say, you know, we, we looked at all this stuff and we said, uh, ah, table variables, and we shook our fists, and we got, you know, gathered up the angry villagers, uh, rounded, rounded up a constabulary. We, we did everything we could. We, you know, united our forces, and we were like, you know what? Uh, we're going to do, we're going to do the query, query tuning professional thing and we're going to replace at signs with pound signs or hash signs, depending on where in the world you, uh, you, you live. And let's just say that we wanted to change this query to use, uh, temp tables instead of table variables. And just to make life a little bit easier, because there's only two statements in this one, let's run this. And now we'll see that this didn't take 15 seconds. We had... Two, we have our queries now that finish very quickly. This one takes 2.2 seconds, yay, and this one takes uh, 352 milliseconds. So, you know, the temp table wins again, uh, the old temp table versus table variable foot race. And uh, just to preemptively answer any questions, no, a common table expression wouldn't be better here. You stop it. Just stop it with the common table expressions. <sighs> They're not, they're not your friend. So again, this is how you can use SP human events uh, to monitor, pro you, could, you could even say, you could use it to profile the, the uh, activity of a single SPID. And that's what we did here. And we got valuable information and insight into what our query was doing, why it was taking a long time. And then we knew exactly what to do to fix it. So if you find yourself in your job as a uh, whatever you do, having to tune SQL Server queries. Uh, this is a great way to capture the, uh, the uh, performance details of store procedures that do a whole lot of different crazy things so that you can figure out exactly where you should start tuning them. Uh, granted, I, on this one, I started with a very low query duration. That's a very low ceiling for me. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking at something for the first time, uh, I'll probably set this higher, like one second or five seconds or... 10 seconds, depending on, on, you know, like what I know about the store procedure. Generally, if someone tells me that something runs for a half hour and I see there's like, you know, like get some information about it. And I see that like the worst running queries run for like over a minute. I might even set that query duration thing to like 30 seconds so that I focus on the big stuff first. And I don't get like all squirrel brained about, oh, well, this thing takes like five seconds. I should also fix that, even though I know that like, getting like improving something that runs for like 30 seconds by you know five seconds isn't, or like 30 minutes by five seconds isn't going to make anyone happy i want to focus on the big stuff first uh so this is a few different ways you can do that um you can get this again for for totally free from my github repo the link to the github repo will be in the in the video description and uh you can you can you can start your fun there so that's that's good too all sorts of interesting stuff in there. And you can use SP human events for uh, several different, uh, uh, different things that you might care about in SQL Server, blocking compiles, recompiles, things like that. So there's all sorts of good stuff you can do in there. And um, yeah, uh, this is the most common way I use it. I, I, hope, I, hope you, I, hope, I hope you find it as useful as I have found it. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you'll go use this... Uh, store procedure that was a, a quite a monumental chunk of effort to get uh get working and correct and uh all that other good stuff <laughs> god extended events are hard that's why i made this thing uh but anyway if you like this video uh there are you have options for showing me your your mass approval there's a thumbs up button which is good there's a comment area where you can leave nice comments no mean comments please. I'm a fragile human being. Uh, and if you like this sort of stuff generally, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I want to say that at this point, if you subscribe to my channel, you will be one of nearly 3,448 people who have also subscribed. So the next person will be 3,448. Imagine that. It's quite a Quite an island of misfit toys. <laughs> Mass deer. Anyway, uh, 
Thank you for watching. Uh, it's hot under these lights, uh, and I'm going to go drink some water or I fall over. Thank you.